talks first? You talk first. I talk first. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Han Talks First. I am your host, Han. This is a bonus episode. We're going live today. We're here to discuss how to start your own podcast, how to start your own YouTube, your own Twitch stream, how to start streaming, all that kind of good stuff. And I'm joined by a very special friend. But before I get into that, I want to let you know that if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We do tons of Star Wars content. And every Friday, we host the Marvel Talk Show, where me and my girlfriend talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, all the movies coming up, and all that kind of great stuff as well. And if you don't have time for a video, and you just are here for a couple minutes, you can check this out later on the podcast form on all the platforms, your podcasting host of choice, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Overcast, etc. So you can go there. Please rate, review, and subscribe if you are new. Like the video if you're watching it live. We really appreciate you joining us today. And we can't thank you enough for being here. Like I said, I'm not alone. I'm here with a very special guest. She was on the show once before, and she's back to discuss some really great things. So welcome, everyone. Yessi Riviera, how's it going? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. This has been the highlight of my week. <laughs> Your first time live on Han Talks First. How does it feel? Feels great. I'm so excited. I really hope we get some really fun engagement tonight and I can an ask some questions, some questions that I've been dying to ask you. <laughs> uh, I'm excited too. And for any of you who don't know Yessie, she was on my show once before I interviewed her because she has a relationship with Star Wars. You can check out episode 105 of Han Talks First, where we talk about Star Wars Rebels and a bunch of other great things. And you can see more there so be sure to check that out if you like it today if you are joining us live let us know in the chat who is here and submit your questions anything you have regarding podcasting youtube twitch or even if it's just about you know life pop culture we'll we'll talk about anything but the main reason why we're here today is actually for a reason that yesi proposed to me and uh yesi why don't you tell people how this idea came up and um why we're actually here today. Yeah, I was so inspired after being um, on that previous episode that I really wanted to know how I should start. Um, I really want to start my own channel. And I don't really know, I didn't even know where to begin. Um, I have some sort of setup, but I really want to make a checklist, make sure I'm prepared and know what the best practices are for me to start podcasting and live streaming. Exactly. So yes, he's here today to start conceiving a podcast and we're going to help her out and you guys can help her out too. We have a lot of great things that you can help suggest and uh, submit requests for what Yessie can actually do to build a, a platform for herself. So this is going to be great. We have a lot of great things to talk about before we actually jump into it. I do want to shout out my girlfriend because look at this artwork. Look at this. That's amazing. She did this like on the fly. We were like, wouldn't it be cool if we did? Well, yes, he suggested like a master apprentice type photo or picture. And she animated this and from a picture that yes, he had from her Disney days. And it was a uh, I don't know. It's really cool. I like it. And I think it works. I love perfect. it. It's perfect. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> It'll probably be my banner. I'm thinking maybe to Ooh. start out on Twitch because I know you do need a banner and a thumbnail. So. I might go that route to start off with, um, especially because, you know, Star Wars is near and dear to our hearts. Um, but yes. it, it might be too easy, too, because I feel I don't want to pigeonhole myself with a specific niche. So we'll get into that uh, as far as branding. Definitely. And uh, I want to welcome anyone who's watching live. Robin in the chat. Hello. Josh Anderson is here. Hello there, he says. And um, Rural Farm Boy is here. And anyone else, uh, please throw in your name in the chat. Say hello. Let us know you're here and ask us any questions you might have. Now, why are we doing this today? Why are we doing a video on how to start your own podcast? Well, because it's important for the community and everyone has a voice. Everyone has an individual voice, something that is distinct and specific to them that not everyone else has. And the more people involved in the conversation, the better. So hopefully today we can make it a little easier for you when if you're wanting to start out because you don't have to have all these big fancy things. You can just get out and start talking. And the point of this is to not make you freak out about it. So don't worry. We're going to hold your hand through this. 
and we're going to make this really easy. And um, as we continue on, I just want to let people know, you know, there is a tipping option. If you want to support this channel, you can go to streamelements.com slash hauntalks first slash tip. That is also in the description down below. You don't have to support, but if you do, we will take any questions you submit there and use them as a main topic here in the show. If you want to go the extra mile, there's a Patreon page. Just go to Han Talks first. You can be a, a monthly subscriber there and you get all this additional fun extra stuff that you wouldn't get normally. And a little bit later today, I will tell you about one of the sponsors for today's show, Audible, and how you can get a free 30-day trial. So stick around and find out later. So let's jump right into it and let's talk about what is podcasting. Okay. So Yessi, what comes to your mind when you hear podcast? What what do you automatically think of for you? I think of it as an audio program. Um, it can be about anything and it takes people on a deep dive into a specific topic. 100%. Yeah, it's it's essentially just spoken word audio enjoyment. It could be for entertainment, for um, to inform or to educate, uh, pretty much anything like that. This one is obviously, well, my show is obviously entertainment and like theorizing and things like that, but it can be about so much more. And the reason why you should start now is because podcasting is bigger than it's ever been. I mean, especially after the, the pandemic first hit, uh, podcasts rose in numbers so much by people creating. And so why not start now? Because there's so many more tools available to people and you don't have to rely on like a company to back you or spending money. And that's kind of how we're going to what we're going to talk about today. And I wanted to share some fun facts about podcasting that um are happening in the world right now. So actually one in three people in their 20s listen to podcasts on a monthly basis. So another reason why you should start one. If you think people aren't going to listen, there's tons of people out there that actually listen to podcasts. That's so interesting. I actually started consuming podcasts regularly. It's, Can you hear me? I think I lost. Yeah, I think you're having some technical difficulties on. We yeah, can you hear me? Here we go. I think you're back. Okay, I see you now. I see you. Okay. okay. We lost each other. Okay. We found each other. <laughs> um, hopefully that didn't cut out for... <laughs> hopefully that didn't cut out for any of you watching. But I was just saying how podcasting got its name is back in 2004 actually back then they were just known as talk shows but until the mm -hmm. ipad oh i think we lost han altogether now them remotely like, and we lost hence you, han can you hear me i can hear you yes okay you just cut out for a second but i think you're back isn't this is another thing we'll talk about today technical difficulties how to overcome them and how to adapt to them but basically, I was saying podcasting comes from the word iPod because you could listen to it on your iPod. Kind of a fun fact. I, love uh, the, that. The, I was yeah. actually today, I started consuming podcasts regularly over the course of the pandemic. And I found myself really enjoying anything that was like deep storytelling and audiobook type stuff, and then like mystery, like crime stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there there was this one I heard a while ago called uh Shit Town. Shit Town. Oh and yeah, it was, Shit Town was really good. You heard about it? Yeah, I listened to it. It was great. It, it was and it so it can also a podcasting can also be storytelling. It doesn't have to be a talk show. But that one was just... really controversial. I recommend it to anyone who hasn't listened to it. Um, we were listening to it on a drive up to Tennessee for a little vacation, and we ended up getting so enraptured in the story that we ran out of gas on the highway. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, we forgot, completely forgot to get gas, which I don't recommend. I mean, I love listening to podcasts while driving, but yeah, don't get so caught up in your podcast that you forget to get gas. <laughs> But that shows you how powerful they can be. And especially Absolutely. with Shit Town, which it's like, I think it's like six episodes, an hour each, but it, it's such an incredible story. And it's based on true events. And it's uh, that old man is just so 
so interesting but he's like a regular guy but it's like looking at it from different perspectives and that's that's how they become interesting kind of like filmmaking so yeah oh yeah I and recommend there's a Shit twist Town. that i did not see coming at all at the end and i was like oh my god this is it started out as one thing and it ends up as something completely different which is i think so beautiful like it's just like how life happens and the fact that the producer was able to adapt kind of like you said like having that adaptability to change and kind of seeing where the story takes you that was so inspiring to me yeah definitely if any of you guys have seen it uh let us know in the chat what you thought and uh share your share your thoughts there and um any other podcast recommendations you guys have throw them out there they could be star wars podcasts they could be a uh, podcast about cooking, whatever you listen to, let's find out what people like listening to. And we'll share some of ours later as well. So let's start off with, with Yessie because Yessie wants to build a community. She wants to build a channel. She wants to exploit her passions and talk with people about them. And what she's starting with now is kind of developing that concept and trying to figure out what it is she wants to do exactly. She may have some ideas here and there, but um, you actually had some questions to ask of anyone listening or watching. Um, do you want to start there? Yeah, I guess initially um, I have a pretty nice following on Instagram and I've used uh, the um, handle Yes, he set sail for years now. And so that's kind of something on the forefront of my mind. Should I continue using my Instagram handle and my socials, or should I switch things up, you know, with something that's more on par with um, my whatever it just whatever it is that I decide to focus on with my theming? Well, the th see, the, the thing is there, it's like, you you have a pretty big following on Instagram already, don't you? You have a couple thousand yeah, and I think, you know, that's a brand that I've curated over some time, um, having experience with modeling and lifestyle and um, doing commercial acting. And I definitely feel that that's an advantage. So I want to hold on to it. But at the same time, I'm open. I'm open to rebranding and, and doing something that's more niche, I suppose. Yeah, so here's here's something that I struggled with when starting my show is... It was, I, I wanted, to be honest with you, I, my first uh, want for podcasting was it wasn't going to be Star Wars. I wanted to do a music podcast. I wanted to just have a podcast to talk about music, music theory, uh, different, you know, part writing, composing, all that kind of stuff. And I knew no one was going to listen to it because I had, I don't have a following. So I decided to do something else that I love that other people really enjoy to kind of get started get my foot in the door so i started with han talks first but again the name han talks first tells you nothing about what my show is about right that's right. how important the name is or uh, or your brand of of whatever show you're going to do the hardcore star wars fans will understand that it is a play on han shot first but right. the everyday casual fan is going to have no idea what that is so i ended up having to change the name of my show to Han Talks First, a Star Wars podcast, as you can see in the picture here. And once I did that, I actually got way more listeners than I ever did before. And I had already been doing this show for a year at that point. So the name is very important. The The niche is, is also really important. My niche is Han Talks First, those words, because the hardcore people will get it. And they know it's a Star Wars podcast. But then I, I had to broaden it to get a, a bigger listener base by putting a Star Wars podcast on it helped bring a lot more people in. And that's something I struggle with on my YouTube because people will see Han Talks first and they don't really know it's a Star Wars podcast. You know, all the big Star Wars shows, they're called star wars theory star wars explained star wars lore star wars analysis they have the word star wars so i think when it comes to you if you put yes you set sail all your your friends your followers now are gonna know what it is they might not know what you're talking about unless they know you're into modeling and all that kind of stuff but does that name 
tell people what your show is about that don't know who you are. Right. So it does benefit to make it very specific in the title. Now, when it comes to a podcast, do you think that the entire season has to be about the same topic or can you kind of bounce around per episode? So I, I don't think so. I mean, if you look at someone like Joe Rogan, for example, it's never about the same thing. And he always has guests on to help bring in different topics of discussion. And I've started doing that, branching out a little bit, because now I do the Marvel talk show that's affiliated with the Han Talks First podcast. So again, I'm struggling with brand confusion. I might have to create a brand new podcast just about Marvel. So I think you can, especially with the name Yes, He Sets Sail, because that can be broad. But if it's like, honestly, if I saw that and I didn't know who you were, I would probably think it was about boating. Yeah, or something yeah, like it's that. so funny that the whole Yes, He Said Sail concept came about when I moved to Tokyo in 2012 and I opened my Instagram and it was me embarking on a new journey. So I find that that can still apply because I'm now, you know, entering the world of being an online personality and what all that entails. I don't know. Um, I'm setting sail and seeing what what's um, I will where I'll dock, you know, at the shore. But I love that metaphor. I love that analogy. And I think it just kind of rolls off the tongue. Like I've had it for so long. So yeah. as an identity, like I think it's great, but I do need to be more specific. I think when it comes to like naming my podcast, what is it that I want to really dive into? Is it current events? Um, is it my history with modeling um, and my experience with Disney? Because as you know, I worked for Disney for some time and that's something I'm really passionate about. And I'm really interested in hearing about other people's experiences working for Disney. Um, but I don't want to limit myself either, if that makes sense. No, definitely. And anyone who's listening, I'm posting in the comments now a poll, a poll that Yessi has made for people to try and help her figure out what her show should be about. I'm going to bring it up on screen for those of you who can't click on it right away. But check this out. This is uh, Yessie's little site here for the poll. And she has like, what do you want to hear me talk about most? And you can pick your vote on any of these things, such as personal style, modeling, Disney, cultural events. And so you can help her decide here. And you can also pick what kind of games you would want to see her play as well. And I would definitely love to see you play... <laughs> I mean, I, I say Battlefront because it's Star Wars, but probably GTA before anything, because I feel like that would be just your reactions would be so hilarious to that. <laughs> I just started. So over the pandemic, um, I started gaming for the first time. And so I got a switch and I got um, I have my boyfriend's Xbox. And so I ordered all the gear and I just started. I created a character on GTA and like, oh, my God, like that game. There's so much wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like because it's like a hot take, I think people will be really interested. And I'm totally down to like make a fool out of myself. I'm terrible. At it, but it's so fun. Like also, OK, why the hell? This is just a total like side note. Why the hell do they switch the buttons on the switch versus the Xbox? Um, I got used to playing one and then I switched to the other one. And I'm like, what the fuck? The X and the Y are switched and the A and the B are swapped. Yeah, well, I struggle. I struggle with that with PlayStation to Xbox. I have a yeah, so hard, such a hard time adapting. They swap the X and the Y and the A and the B. So every yeah. time I get used to one, and then I want to switch consoles just to you know have a different feel because also the controls are like the Switch is like this big, and then the <laughs> right. Xbox is really comfy and great. But then my brain it gets all like mush by the time I I've, I've been playing for four hours, and then I want to play. Okay, let me play some Overwatch on the Switch. I'm like ah like screaming at the TV. <laughs> but that's good entertainment, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Um, Josh in the live chat says um, he would definitely like to see some Battlefront too from you. So there is one vote already cast. But yeah, guys, go over here. It's in the chat. Just click on the link and you can help her decide. Just click voting here and then you can help her decide if she should keep Yes, He Set Sale or try something new. So be sure to 
head over there and check that out. And I will remind you guys a little later about that as well. But one of the questions I want to ask you, Jesse, and this goes for everybody, when you're starting a show, developing a, con uh, a concept for your show, and this isn't to be rude, but this is a, a real question that needs to be, that you need to ask yourself, why would anyone want to watch your videos? Totally. I think it's really important to be really true to yourself and like in tune because we talked about it earlier like the internet is such a wild card and you don't know how people are going to come at you and so you have to have this like really strong internal compass so for me i want to connect with people who have common interests um i hope that people who see things um, and can connect with me um can feel like they have a friend, do you know? Like I feel the people that I follow that I really love, like Corpse and um, Bretman, they're really, really popular um, YouTubers and they stream on Twitch playing games. Like I feel like they're my friends. And so I would love to have a connection with an audience and a community that appreciates my personality and my personal style. I think those are the things that people might connect with me and feel like they there's somebody out there who is living, you know, living their best life and it kind of keeps them going. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. hundred percent. So do you, is one of your goals to build a, a community similar to like how I want to do, like just people that I can just talk Star Wars with and like, is that something you're looking for to, oh, to either yeah, talk absolutely. about gaming maybe? Gaming, um, entertainment, beauty. I'm really passionate about self-care and being able to look the way that I want to look and what exactly goes into being able to do that. And that's something that um, I'm really excited to kind of dive into. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I have an esthetician's license in the state of Florida. And this summer, I'm actually going to be working towards renewing my license here in New York because I need to do a couple more hours of schooling. But I'm really excited because that gives me yeah. the opportunity to learn and to practice this craft on new canvases. And I really want to document that journey. Um, also, I plan on going to Burning Man for the first time this year. Oh, nice. It'll be my first burn. So that's another part of my journey that is gonna be i have no idea what is, to that, expect. is that what they say it'll be my first burn yeah it's it's <laughs> it's the burn yeah that's great yeah that's it's my first burn so i really want to document that journey and yeah that'd be that awesome goes into prepping for burning man because it is it's not coachella that's for sure <laughs> yes um well some i, I want to get to some of the comments in uh, one second, but I want to ask one more question about um, developing a concept and developing a show for you. I think this is the most important question is how much time do you have to commit to doing something like this? Because one of the important things we'll talk about later is formatting and you have to, if, if you're going to do a show once a week, you got to do it once a week, right? Or else mm -hmm. people are, there's not going to be a, um, people won't won't trust you if, if you say you're going to do it next week and you won't be there or like if you do a bi-weekly show or a monthly show it's it's all about um i totally lost the word but how much time do you have to commit for a show right now i have a lot of time which is great um i'm hoping to kind of wing it i guess at first because a podcast i do want to be more streamlined and that's something that i'm hoping to put out maybe later this summer with a really nice schedule. But for streaming, I wanna do it maybe three times a week, two to three hours a session, just streaming live on Twitch, gaming. And then once I solidify my skill set and my audience, I really, <laughs> I wanna start a, a campaign like from the beginning with my audience and my viewers to see me, you know, finish a game all the way through. I think that's a really nice goal. I think so too. <laughs> I think that's a good way to start. Uh, let me get to some of you in the chat who are joining us today. So thank you so much for being here. Um, a lot of you participating. Rule Farm Boy. Uh, I want to get to some of his comments here. He was saying, I've been a listener of many podcasts for many years, mostly all Star Wars, some Firefly. Interesting. My first playlist was born in 2011, the forecast before Jimmy and Jason, who became Rebel Force Radio. Interesting. I didn't know they had something before that. So, Rural Farm Boy, I think, listens to 
all of my episodes because he sure does retweet a lot, which thank you so much, by the way, a loyal listener here. And he listens to tons of podcasts. So Yessie, I think you already have your first fan here or first committed follower whenever you start one because Rural Farm Boy listens to a lot. And yeah, I do that. I'll, I'll definitely give you a follow back. Uh, my Twitter is at Yessie Set Sail. You're not very active on Twitter, are you? No, I never really um, figured that one out. I, I do like to share some things, but I find it can be really toxic. I don't know. Like, with well, the you're not thing, wrong. <laughs> like, it's just like a weird culture that I never really got into. I feel like Instagram was really big when it was big in 2000, like, 13 through 16 i feel like that was like the peak of instagram and now it's the algorithm's different and i still post i feel like that's where i'll post more often on my story more than anything yeah yeah twitter is a rough place josh <laughs> it is rough and i don't know i don't have it in me like i don't have it in me to argue never like i'm like when people text me if you're gonna text me a paragraph i'm not reading that like, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not reading that. <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> I don't, I, I can't, I could just be on my, you know, on my switch in Animal Crossing fishing, you know, instead. But hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> well, that's good to know if, uh, if you ever do me wrong or we're having an argument, I'm just, whenever I text you, it's going to be all paragraphs. So subtweet, <laughs> subtweet yes. me a paragraph. I won't read it. <laughs> Well, you just let everybody who's a hater know, and that's what they're going to, if they, if they have a problem with you, they're going to flood you. So, Hey, I've heard God awful things about Twitter threads that go south really quick. I have a good friend, <laughs> uh, Sarah Bear on Twitch. She's a really popular streamer. She was actually part of this like initial campaign when Cyberpunk came out. And so she was contracted to play the game full time. And I mean, I think she tweeted something at them um, about a very explicit comment that one of the computer characters, so it wasn't even like an online player that said it, but it was like a programmed response within the game that's really, really shocking. I won't even go there into detail on to what it said, but when she tweeted at them, she got so much crap for it. Like she got so many responses of people who are like diehard fans of of the of the game even though it's an unfinished game and there's only 15 hours of gameplay <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's the tea but she got so much hate for just speaking up against like misogynistic gross things being programmed into a game for female players that could be triggering yeah speaking of games uh josh has a question for you what are your favorite games yesy do you have any favorite games so far Yes, uh, right now. Um, so first and foremost, Animal Crossing um, helped get me through this pandemic. It is such a like innocent, pure, wholesome game. And I love it. My island is beautiful. I just <laughs> love the idea of being able to kind of check out into my own little world. And there's no like stress. Um, on the other side of that, very stressful. I've been playing Crash Bandicoot on the Switch complete opposite it's one of those games where i'm either like laughing because he turns into an angel or his like sneakers <laughs> fall off every time i die or i'm like screaming because i missed a box but also satisfying like jumping on boxes it's just like satisfying and overwatch i think that that's another one of my favorites but i'm, I'm gonna make myself seem really nerdy here over the course of the pandemic i played my first campaign of um divinity original sin 2 the definitive edition it's a dungeon. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> themed game. Oh, D and D. Yes, I. It's so good. It's probably one of the best, um, like live action role playing games out there. And it's like fantasy and it's strategy and it's a turn based game, which was new. So, um, yeah, I can't believe we we got through. We had a whole um, group. There were four of us that played a campaign together over the pandemic, and I had my little headset on, like gaming <laughs> for the first time. And I was like, I can't believe it. I was like this cool elf. I was an elf ranger type. I know nothing about D and D. Unfortunately, I, love it. I, I was so introduced to it right now, as a kid. If you love it, like 
come come hit me up <laughs> we can geek out about it uh yeah so um <laughs> how often do you rage quit is his follow-up question I can take, so Crash Bandicoot, for instance, I can take game over maybe three times before I'm like, no, like, ah, like, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and you just like, if you save and you have one life, like, you're going to get game over immediately because I'm going to just like fall off the cliff like at the first try. It's fine. <laughs> I've been wanting to get into gaming, uh, but... I don't know why I haven't. Uh, I mean, uh, one is I, I really don't have the money to buy games because they're so expensive for video games. And um, the other one is I I, I kind of stick to like three games. Halo is my favorite game of all time. But if I don't play Halo, I'm either playing Call of Duty Zombies mode or I'm playing Doom. And that's really all I play. I'm not very diverse when it comes to... <laughs> I should be more open, but... Those are good ones. Uh, Call of Duty. I'm I'm not the best at point and shoot. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm trying to practice with Overwatch, and then I think I'll make my way over um, to Call of Duty because my boyfriend plays it all the time, literally. All on the Xbox. Time. He plays it on PC. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Well, if he ever gets it for Xbox, uh, we should play together. I'm down. Yeah, I think we have it on the Xbox, so maybe we can we can learn to play. I'll learn to play. Yeah, and then we can like do a stream together. That'd be fun. Yeah, that sounds point. good. Um, we have a question from Rule Farm Boy, and I'm gonna kind of let you take the floor here for a minute, Yessi. He he wants to know your Star Wars story. Um, I guess he hasn't seen the interview with you before, so why don't you tell everyone your Star Wars story again? Um, just while while we got you here. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'll make it brief this time. Um, if you do want to hear more in depth, um, feel free to check out that episode. Um, but I saw my first Star Wars film when I was a teenager and I actually, I saw one, two, and three. So I saw the prequels before. So that's kind of different. And honestly, I wasn't super into it, <laughs> but, um, I worked for Walt Disney world in 2011 and, um, went to work for Tokyo Disneyland in 2012, came back in 2013 and, I was brought in for an audition, um, an internal audition at Walt Disney World for Star Wars Weekends because they were debuting a brand new character um, from the series Star Wars Rebels. Um, they only had like a rough sketch at the time and they were basically trying to cast the initial prototype for what the character was going to look like in the parks. And I ended up being selected and I was the first prototype face character for Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels. So I debuted her in London in 2014 when the series premiered and did Star Wars Weekends 2014 and 2015. So that was an amazing experience. It basically solidified my Star Wars love. Um, being a Mandalorian, I was obsessed with Mandalorian when it came out on Disney Plus and followed that series and would love to talk about that series more in depth as well and all of the lore that goes into being a Mandalorian. Um, but yeah, um, I'll always be Sabine in here. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I love your story. And for anyone who hasn't or is new here or hasn't heard our episode before, head on over. It's episode 105. You can hear Yessie's story a little bit more about Star Wars Rebels, her experience with Disney and Lucasfilm and all that good stuff. And we'll do a regular Star Wars show again with with Yessie. We were going to we were discussing actually doing a females of the force episode, a follow up to the one me and my girlfriend did over a year ago. So a part two, which is um, basically just simple as that, discussing all the great females in Star Wars and what they've brought to it, both behind the camera and in front of the camera. So we'll, we'll pick a date for that as well. Um, thank that. you for keeping the questions coming, guys. If you have anything else, please do. And if any of you, again, are working on a podcast, you know, even if you're listening on on the podcast forum, you can shout us out on social media and we'll be happy to help you there too. And head on over to the YouTube to check out some of the visuals that we're showing a little bit later. So let's talk about the next thing someone should focus on when doing a podcast, and which I think is the most important part and the one that people don't like to follow, and, and that is formatting. And you had a great question for, for me when we were setting up the show about 
you know, what is the difference between podcasting and live streaming? So I wanted to ask you again, like, what's your interpretation of the difference between them both? Before so I give podcast, you mine. Yeah, a podcast to me seems way more structured. There's usually a script or some, some type of scripting involved. And usually the episodes are all, they all follow that same structure. Um, to tell a story or to really break down an event um, or um, a particular topic. Um, let's say you're discussing a crime that happened. You're going to break it down per episode chronologically and give any new information on new episodes to come. After you wrap things up, you can do updates. Whereas a live stream, it's much more on the fly you're open to interacting with an audience, which makes it really, really different, I think. And you kind of have the opportunity to see where things go without it being as rigid. Uh, I, I totally agree. I think you're 100%. I mean, kind of kind of my answer is very opinionated. It's not like fact, you know, I, I don't know if this is actually true or what other people might think. But yes, I kind of agree with you. Podcast is formatted. Podcast has a purpose. There's an intention or a goal with them. Live stream is in the moment, interactive. And like, for example, every Monday, I host an episode of Han Talks First, the Star Wars show. And sometimes I do it live. And when I do it live, I still consider it a podcast because I'm not directly engaging with the chat 100% of the time. And I have scripts that I follow that I create for every show. I have main topics, discussion questions. And the way it would that would not be considered a podcast is if I came in without any intention of what I was going to talk about and just hang out, either whether it was gaming with people, just l hanging out with people in the chat, or just kind of talking about my day and stuff like that. You could argue that still is considered podcasting, but for me and what I'm doing, um, I do distinguish it that way. And of course, podcast is audible. If you make a podcast and you put it on Spotify or Apple and you're talking about something that is yet you need the visual on screen and your listener has to go from the podcast form over to the YouTube to know what you're talking about, that's not a podcast. Like like you said earlier, you think a podcast is an audible an audio file, something you can just listen to. So yeah, I put visuals up on the screen here, but you really don't need them to understand what me and Yessie are talking about today. So that's kind of also how I distinguish it. Audio is key for podcasting. That's a really, and, really great point because I have seen podcasts have video. Like I can go on YouTube and watch a podcast. Right. However, if I were to just listen to it, if I'm able to understand and follow along because it's an audio program, not just a video program. That's what makes it a podcast. What I'm really excited to talk about today, because I, I really like some of the formatting I've done with my show. Uh, other people might disagree, but I, I really like where I'm at now. And the first thing I mentioned was script. You know, I, I don't put down every single word I say on paper, but I put down at least a cold open that I write out. And then I write out the different topics I want to discuss and bullet points on what I think about those topics. And then I just riff off of that. So when I say scripting, you know, I'm not talking about reading off a teleprompter or something, but just kind of knowing where you're going with your conversation. That way it's, it's more organized and people probably find it a little bit more interesting. So with your, you know, future project, is it something that you think you're going to want to do more of like the live streaming aspect or just the podcasting or kind of a bit of both? And how do you I think, think you'll separate them? Yeah, I, I do think I, I want to attempt both. I think live streaming is going to be more um, straightforward for me. And especially with like getting into gaming and stuff like that just seems like the natural progression of things. But with, when it comes to a podcast, I really do want to take the time to be organized. I am a Virgo, so it's just naturally <laughs> something that I need. Um, you know, I literally sent you a Google Doc like as soon as we got off the phone because I just really like to be on top of things. And 
um, it's like you said, like you don't want to spend your whole time just giving opinions that aren't necessarily helpful or beneficial to people. And it's really important for me to be a credible source. So if I'm spreading information, make sure I'm doing my research and I'm giving my perspective in a way that like, I'm always going to ask myself, is this helpful? Is this beneficial? Like, what what is my point? You know, and I think when you focus on those types of things, you end up with something that is actually worth listening to. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. And uh, some examples of what I do, which might help you again, aside from what I've already talked about, but, but in addition to the cold open, I also have I also make sure my each episode has a beginning, a middle and an end, something that kind of tells a story, not a straight narrative but kind of uh, expository and just just organized and then i also have different segments like specialized segments and a lot of a lot of my listeners really love one of the segments of my show which is titled star wars replay i do that every monday and it's a very simple 40 second clip of of star wars history what has happened this week in star wars history i'm going to play an example of it because i didn't play it on monday's show so here is star wars replay for this week in star wars history star wars replay star wars replay is where we replay major moments and events that happened this week in star wars history and on this week back in 1976 filming began for star wars a new hope's cantina scene at elstree studios also this week, back in 1992, Rey Skywalker, Daisy Ridley herself, was born. In 1978, the first ever Star Wars storybook was published. And in 1980, The Empire Strikes Back, a novelization by Donald F. Glutt, was also published. And finally, in 1995, the comic Star Wars Droids Rebellion No. 1 was published. That's it for Star Wars Replay. Tune in next Monday to find out what major moments and events happened next week in Star Wars history. So, oh, thank you, thank you. So the reason why I, I highlighted that. Oh, thank you. So the reason why I highlighted that is because segments are also very important for bringing people in because I can clip that out, put it on TikTok, put it on Instagram, put it on YouTube Shorts, and people love short form content, like fifteen to forty five seconds. So when I do a segment like that, I can clip it out of the main show put it somewhere else and say, this is a clip from episode 100 from my show and put a link and then more people can come to it. So it's not just for the listeners on that show, but also for bringing in new people on other platforms. And I see your question, Josh, on how difficult it is to market your podcast. I'm going to answer it, but we have a section for that in a few minutes. So don't worry, I'm going to get to your question. Um, but there was another question from Josh about for Yesi. Um, yes. If you what did discuss you topic, what would you prefer? Yeah, sorry, I cut you off there. Um, yeah, that's something that I actually added to my poll, which for me, I'm really open. Um, I just really want to make sure that I'm talking about things where I have some credibility. So the modeling industry is something that I have been a part of since I was 14 years old. And um, I'm actually kind of taking a hiatus from it, and I have a lot of opinions about the modeling industry. So that's something that um, can feel a bit niche, but I find it's it can be really eye opening to if you're on the outside looking in, you know, getting that perspective. Um, working for Disney, like I said, uh, beauty, um, lifestyle, personal style, and different tips. Um, yeah. for your personal style and then also current events uh like you said like fandoms marvel um i'm into harry potter star wars um diehard survivor fan over here and i actually just started watching the circle on netflix which is actually a really interesting one that i would love to do an episode on because it it kind of reminds me of survivor in a way without the you know surviving aspect but the social <laughs> right. aspect um and gaming, uh, gear and tech and what you prefer, what works, what doesn't. Um, like I said, all these topics I'm super open to, but anything that I will touch on, I want to make sure I have credibility. So I want to bring in interesting people that have expertise in those topics as well and make That's sure I'm doing idea. my research. Yeah. W one thing I thought of while you were talking about that was 
it brought me back to your uh the meaning of yes he sets sail and how you like travel see new things and come into new ports and stuff like that well what if that is one of the themes of the show and you have a yes he sets sail uh segment almost where you try a new thing one of which can be a new game and so it's like i'm gonna try this new game watch it with me and because you said you just started gaming so like your your theme or your title can be something like i've never played a uh battlefront in my life this is my first time type thing and that's already a great title and you already have you know the streaming capabilities so you can start like doing something like that and then people can follow you the whole way through if you do like a weekly thing and watch you play the game figure it out and then go on to the next game i think that's a a good idea and you could do it with um other things too like yes he said sale how to cook or like i'm starting my first recipe or something you know different you don't have to do that do that but <laughs> like that'd be a good a good like premise almost i love that i think that that's a great idea especially because most of this is all completely new to me so it it's really earnest i think and i i think it makes me relatable which i think is really important to building that audience and and uh making a community online is being just yourself i i can't stress that enough i feel like with social media it's so easy to get caught up in the performance aspect of it and kind of right. maintaining this persona that doesn't actually exist like i for so long especially with modeling like my instagram was just like all these like kind of over the top photos like looking back now i'm like i don't want to be perceived you know <laughs> but <laughs> i just i i elevated it to a level that i couldn't maintain like it's just really not attainable or maintainable because it's not a real person like i'm not actually somebody who wake i didn't wake up like this you know what i mean <laughs> like it takes effort to look like that and i kind of want to be more authentically myself while also you know expressing myself in new and exciting ways well I, that totally fits with kind of i think that would work great for you and i think that works with the name as well even even if you're considering changing it, um, still look at the positives of the Yes, He Said Stale name because I think I think that's a good place to start. Um, it sounds like a TV show. Like, Yes, He Said Stale is almost like, yes, he tries new things every day or something like that. And like, this is my new thing I'm doing today. I think it's a great idea. It yeah, my initial work. like thought process when I, I chose it was because I was going to Japan and I thought like, how cool would it be to have a travel segment where I go and I showcase like the culture in a different city and talk to the locals and get like the locals perspective on things. And I know a lot of people would be interested in that lifestyle type piece. Um, and yeah. I do follow a lot of different um, YouTube bloggers that like there's one couple who is sailing across the Pacific right now. And it's so interesting to me to see like every time they port, but I don't actually have a boat. So. <laughs> oh my gosh that should be your that should be your um that'd be a cool goal like a gofundme get me a boat for my channel or like right. when i get to a hundred thousand subscribers i'll buy a boat so i can actually sail um don't worry yeah, i see I you guys love to sail. Uh, i would love to join you i've never been sailing uh josh thank you for your compliments on star wars replay i too think it's excellent i love it next week is a good one as well and i see a bunch of people mentioning easiest way to market a podcast how to find podcasts the best way to listen we're going to talk about all of that i see google audible anchor all great stuff don't worry we got it planned out to talk about the last thing i'll say about formatting is when you format something it it creates consistency and consistency equals viewer loyalty and it helps you develop a better connection with your listeners like i've connected with a lot of people through star wars replay those those videos like when they stand alone average at a thousand views now that's huge for my channel that's not huge in general but for me that's pretty big and i've gotten so many people brought to my uh, my show just from star wars replay alone and if you do it if you do a format it, it, and that consistency you'll develop a habit and then you'll start um 
you'll start you'll start going to your weekly schedule and you'll start showing up every week and it'll be it'll just become easier every time you do it so i think i think formatting is a great idea for for a regular podcast discussion definitely and the next little bit we were going to talk about which kind of gets into some of your questions is equipment hardware and software yes he had a lot of questions about this one so yes i'm gonna let you start and let me know what's on your mind first and what's most important to you yes um my main questions were how do i optimize my setup and what gear is absolutely essential okay well, let's start there so i think as we talked about earlier audio is key so definitely microphone and along with the microphone you need some kind of way to edit your audio there's tons of great easy ways or free ways to do it such as um let me see i wrote it down here somewhere well of course there's things like um garage band if you're a mac it always comes on there that you can use to edit there's also audacity i think is what it's called which is a free app that you can use to edit audio and the other big one which i'll talk about later is actually anchor.fm which is actually one of the sponsors of this show which i will talk about later too but they have a way for you to make a podcast and edit it on one site and distribute it all at one place so that's an option too so i think mike a uh, editing software and if you're gonna do video then just a webcam i think that's like the easiest thing i mean that's i started it with my phone that was all i did i just recorded it on a voice memo and then uploaded it to my distributor and from there i i adopted the camera uh implementing my microphone implementing my dslr and implementing my interface which we'll talk about too but it's like essentials i think that's really it i mean i love that i i love that you even went out there to say like i started on my phone which means that literally anyone can do it i mean if you really want to do it if you want your voice to be heard like if there's a will there's a way like for me i i have my bluebird because i do voice acting so this was some an investment that i needed to do professionally and i love i love him um uh, it picks up your, your voice great thank you and i also have you don't need a pop filter it's amazing no i it's it's honestly like the best the best um for vocals um i did so much research when looking for a mic and this was the most highly recommended so I'm super happy with it. I have a USB interface. I also have a mixer. So my boyfriend DJs and something we really want to do is start live streaming his sets because he is so talented and is it's it's such a vibe. Like we we will literally we have a one bedroom apartment in New York City and we will be like tearing up the floor up in here just dancing <laughs> the two of us while he practices for events. And I thought, why not just start? streaming his dj sets i think yeah totally a great way to build a community as well i think music is just oh it's perfect i love i love sharing music and connecting with people with music and dance so that's a necessity for djing obviously a mixer and then cameras and lighting so i'm just using my macbook camera right now and your I webcam like yeah like just the webcam i do have a dslr but do I need a capture card as well for my DSLR? Uh, no, you don't. And uh, technically you don't. Uh, it depends on what kind of camera. Uh, I'll walk you through my setup and let everyone know kind of what I use because I have not put a single dollar into my setup, into my equipment, into my gear. Now I'm a musician, so I have a lot of stuff readily available but when it comes to like new things i would need i try and find an alternative way because han doesn't have a job so <laughs> so check it out here's what i use i've had this old canon camera for uh, it's got to be close to 10 years i mean it but it works it works that's what i'm using right now and look at the quality now yes i have black bars on the side <laughs> but that's because it's an old camera that's really the only thing so if you have a newer one you can easily plug that in and all you need to do with this is just buy a um an out cable for usb that you just plug it into 
um, your computer. And I, I can throw some recommendations out there too, but you just look up um, camera to computer USB cable and you'll find one. And they're, re they're really cheap. Maybe like, I don't know, five bucks. Depends on what part of the country you're in, but go to Amazon. But like Yessie said, she's using the webcam. You don't need a DSLR. You yeah. can totally just use the webcam. Like, I it's, feel like my webcam is, it's fine. Like the quality is what it is. And the lighting I feel like is more important than anything with the camera. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a ring light. Um, I don't love my ring light. I would love to invest in something that's less like yellow. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I don't know what the white balance is right now, but um, do you have any recommendations for lighting? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, but I, it's not what I use. I do use a ring light as well. And I don't know, does yours have one color setting? No, it has, it? Um, it has different color settings. Let me see what's, what's going on here. So I can do that one or Let's I can do here. that one. Does that look better? I feel like that's, that's the really yeah, that looks cool good. one. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, you're right. Lighting, lighting is probably the most important because when it comes to getting the attention of people and working on certain platforms such as YouTube, for example, or Instagram, let's say Instagram, if you are promoting an episode of your podcast on Instagram and you upload a video, the Instagram algorithm is going to work, is going to use your video more likely if you have better lighting. If you have poor lighting, it's not even gonna consider you in its algorithm. That's wow. how important lighting is. And it also applies to YouTube as well. Only channels with a certain amount of followers does it apply to, but lighting is key. And also it just looks nice. Like me and you are perfectly lit right now. You can see our faces and maybe people don't want to see mine, but you're on my channel. So. <laughs> but for my lighting recommendation, these right here, an LED light, these are absolutely perfect. And then if you get two of them, one on each side of you, no shadow, and it works really great with a green screen because I know you will obviously have one, but you want to work with it in the future, which um, we could talk about as well. But and just yeah. an LED light you guys can find on Amazon too. I really want to figure it out. I tried to like practice with it, but because I have a shadow, it's like grainy and weird and like is not giving the effect that I want. So I will invest in those LED lights. Yeah, and they're not expensive. I think it's maybe like for that pair I put up on screen, each one is about 40 bucks, which is not bad. And for anyone who wants to know what kind of mic I'm using, I'm using a, well, this one is a, it's a Scarlet Studio. It's not the best, but it's a cardioid condenser mic. The most important thing about it is that it uses phantom power. Phantom power is another word for artificial power that is used from a, uh, either a CPU or an, an interface. And I also use the interface focus, right? Here is a picture here. I have three of these bad boys and I've used these since before they became popular because now everyone uses it, but it is the best of the best. If you want to do a podcast or if you want to record music, this is the, or even DJ, um, like your boyfriend, this is the best way. It's so affordable and it's like the best thing ever. So yeah, it's the one we have too. That's what you have too. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. Isn't it? And there's it's awesome. And it's like really high easy quality. to use for someone like me who, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. Like tech savvy, I would say out of 10, I'm like a seven on a good day, but Ooh. I still have to, you know, FaceTime my fella and ask him 20 questions on which plug goes where. And <laughs> I don't like playing the wire chase game, you know, when you're just like, cause we have a, yeah. a gaming PC and we have, I have, I'm streaming from my MacBook today. And yeah, you know, un unplugging one thing here to plug it in there so that I can like split my, like share my screen and eh. the simpler you, you can get the better I feel, especially when it comes to streaming on the go. That's something um, yeah. like right now you're not at home, but you already know what essential things that you need. Um, how does, how, how did you um, get a handle on that? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because when I I was like running back and forth from my home to where I am now to try and get all my stuff. <laughs> so but if but anyway, I have it 
condensed down to basically just the essentials the the interface the mic and the camera everything else is on my computer and i don't have a, i don't use a capture card um and then of course the ring light is built into the camera so that's not an issue either so it, it's just about yeah minimizing your stuff if you don't have if i if i had the money to buy like a bunch of stuff to have a really fancy studio i wouldn't be able to go remote so it's it's all about just what you need you know so in this case, I'm able to. And the other thing was, you know, if you don't have a webcam for some weird reason, it's 2021, but you can buy these external ones. And these are just as great. They're cheap. This is actually what Chris uses. If any of you watched our stream two weeks ago on the Falcon Winter Soldier, um, she used this and it was clearer than my picture. So recommend that as well. And oh, the other thing for mics I was going to recommend is is I, I touched on it but get one with phantom power phantom power is going to make you sound so much better that's why my voice comes through really clear right now all that is is it just puts 48 volts through the through the the mic power uh, rather than half of that without it so it's very key the more volts you have the clearer you're going to sound so i don't know if do you have phantom power on that mic or no um i think i do i believe so. is it a usb no it's i'm plugged into the interface i don't know focus, i don't know right? the answer <laughs> yeah there's uh, a 48 the, volt button that i did press then this phantom yeah so that's that's a phantom power mic so that's why yes he also sounds really yeah. clear <laughs> she's got it um but the capture card you were asking about the capture card you don't need it for gaming but this so is... I, I was doing a lot of research and I discovered that I do need it to stream on the Switch. Right, because you can't connect that to a PC. Right. You can so connect it via HDMI, but that's only for the monitor. And I don't know if it will oh. actually capture it wh while on another program. Does that make sense? Right. So... Um... That's tricky because it depends on your setup. If you're using a Mac, probably not. So you'd probably have to use your PC. But right. either way, if you get the capture card, that'll work. But when you're doing the streams on, if you're playing a game on your PC, which do you plan on doing or probably not? Yeah, um, so we'll see. Um, we were really excited. We actually built this PC because we wanted to play Baldur's Gate 3 that came out this year. And it was early release and it ended up being a total bust because the game is not finished and they don't have couch co-op available yet. So we are not able to play together, my boyfriend and I, which was the the plan. Um, however, I am considering playing through a campaign by myself on the PC and streaming it, um, just depending on if people are interested. I know that even the people who were super excited and diehard fans of like Dungeons and Dragons and the game that we're super excited we're really disappointed with the actual early release of the game so it might have to wait until next year so oh TBD. I see okay um well when you do if and when you play on the PC itself you can actually depending on what kind of software you use which we'll talk about in a second you can you don't need to buy a capture card to do it you could just do a screen capture or a screen share and then apply it to your your streamer and we'll touch on that too the the last thing i talk about with for xbox right like i can just stream straight from my xbox right um again i think it depends on which software and which platform you're using so i don't have experience with that i know you can with a pc i mean with a um playstation I don't know about Xbox because they're weird. You know, Microsoft is very reserved. But with your green screen, if you wanted to use it, all you, all you need is to have a... Whatever software you use has to have chroma key. And okay. so, like, for anyone watching, the platform we're on now is called StreamYard. And it's a fantastic um, streamer host. And they have an option for green screen on here. So if I had a green screen, I could do it right here on StreamYard. But if you're going to use something like OBS, um, you'll have to apply it yourself, like manually. It doesn't just have an option for it. So it depends on which 
which property you use. If you're using OBS, for example, you would have to first uh, set up your green screen, make sure it's like perfectly lit, like all even, even colored. And then you'll have to apply a, what they call a scene. And I wish I had like a visual to share. And then you'd click on, um, I think it's chroma key detection, select what color background you have. Cause you don't need a green screen. It could be whatever color you want, just as long as it doesn't blend with whatever you're wearing. So like you couldn't have a white screen, for example, but yeah, I did play out. with the setting here on StreamYard today, but I'll show you oh, yeah? here. It, it, it's, can you see it right now? Yeah. Yeah. So there's like some weird effect happening with the mic because my lighting <laughs> isn't great. It's like, so with, with StreamYard, that's the best you could do. Oh, but if okay. you had OBS or Streamlabs or something else, you could, um, go in and adjust the like the sliders and you can fix that blurriness surrounding you so okay. even if you were slider, lit, but i don't trust it <laughs> <laughs> so even if you were lit just like as it is you could fix it in obs but okay. clearly the better lighting you have the better and yeah. of course if you need help with that like when you're actually looking at it i can i can help you out with that too um since i don't have a visual example to share with you um but as far as software goes for streaming there's there's obviously twitch studio youtube studio which are very good i don't use them i don't like them at all you can't do a bunch of fun stuff there's obs streamlabs obs and wirecast which is extremely expensive not extremely but it, it costs money for that and then there's XSplit, and then there's StreamYard, which is what I use. That's all that I've had experience with. I think StreamYard is the best way to go because one, it's free. <laughs> and two, you get to do all this great stuff with it too. Like have guests on and do graphics and other things like that. Don't get me wrong. OBS is free. Streamlabs is free. Um, XSplit, I think, is also free. Um, but I, I prefer um, StreamYard 100%. Awesome. Yeah, I love that they're free. I, I did a little bit of research on this um, directly from Twitch, and they did recommend Twitch Studio and OBS and Streamlabs. And Streamlabs, I know, has a bunch of different extensions like scheduling and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Um, I didn't know if you've actually tried it out, if you know the benefits of using each one. Yeah, so I, I did a couple of weeks actually just using Streamlabs OBS. And I've also used the regular OBS. Regular OBS is way better. Streamlabs is, it's for like um, people that don't want to do as much fancy stuff, I guess. So there's less options. But if you're using a Mac, you can't use OBS. <laughs> it's it's terrible. The, your processing power for Macs are far like, you know, less than that of a PC. So if you're going to use a PC, totally use Streamlabs. But I have to use StreamYard because of I'm using a Mac. And it's also an old Mac. So <laughs> another reason why I have to use my DSLR because my webcam is like 480p. So <laughs> good luck seeing me. Um, I don't know. Did you have any other questions about equipment, software, hardware? No, I think we covered it. Um, I did wonder about like the necessity of having a stand or a mount, for instance, for your mic, I feel like it's pretty important. And if you had any recommendations on like brands for like a desk mount. Uh, desk mount, I have no idea. Um, I've never played around with them. I know Rode, uh, the Rode company specializes in it because they normally work on like film and television. So they're probably the best bet. Um, I just use I'm using a boom mic because I'm a musician, so that's all I have. So it's just a regular vocal mic, but it works because it's not in my way. So that's great too. But yeah, uh, I guess it's just preference. All all mic stands are, you know, feasible. Just depends on. I would recommend Rode totally. Cool. So if you're still with us in the chat, which it looks like you are, thank you for joining us. There were some more questions, and then uh, I'm gonna get into the sponsor of today's episode. So, um, <laughs> Rural Farm Boy says, I follow Hontox on Anchor. 
<laughs> Thank you. I think you're actually the only person who follows me on Anchor itself. Very interesting. Um, Han, are there any are there any skills Yessie may have learned in modeling that might lend themselves well to her podcasting efforts? Um, you tell me your thoughts on that while yeah. I think of mine. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I think modeling. You're so underestimated as a model. I feel like there's such a misconception in what actually goes into modeling. Um, if you don't know anything about it, a lot of people can assume that you just stand there and look pretty. And there's so much more that goes into it. It's actually a skill. And it took me a while to really discover what my brand and my vibe was in front of the camera. And I think being able to be yourself in front of the camera and to present yourself in a way that is by design um, is the biggest takeaway that I can say I gained from modeling. Um, I want to live my life by design. Um, that's my goal for 2021. And um, being able to have a say in my presentation and the way that I carry myself and in my personal style, my look, I think is something that I want to bring to the table with my podcast and my streaming and just the way that I present myself. Well, one thing I think that you could take away from your modeling is the when, when you're doing a shoot, for example, I mean, I could be t dead wrong, but you can correct me. But if you're doing a shoot, isn't it that every time the camera clicks, you have to make a new face or a new pose? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to. There's and you have pro. to be quick. Yeah, you you pick up on the rhythm of the photographer. Usually you guys will fall into some sort of rhythm. And then for each click, yeah, you I mean, you don't if you're shooting on film, you're wasting film if you don't switch it up for every single frame. Um, so that's something to be conscious of. Usually they don't like to shoot inexperienced models on film these days. Everything's digital because it's, I mean, when you're going through like the film from a shoot and there's going to be, you know, ones where you're blinking or where there's an awkward pose, but that can't be the case every single time. So right. you definitely have to be aware of that. And yeah, knowing your angles, knowing the lighting, like finding your light is a huge skill, actually, that I think anybody like it's like you said, I had no idea that the YouTube algorithm will discriminate against the lighting <laughs> <laughs> in different videos. Well, it does. Think about it. If you're Instagram, the way people will continue to watch your platform is if they see quality stuff, which includes good lighting. So why would you want to promote shitty lighting? So it makes sense. It's it, discriminatory. Yes. But I mean, I feel That's some funny. type of way about just algorithms in general. I'm like, oh, oh so do I. <laughs> like, we could ah. do a whole other episode about algorithm in general because it's so vast. Um, anyway, the point I was getting to was because you have to make those quick switches and stuff like that, you understand pacing is important. And in between those camera clicks, you have to come up with a brand new look, a brand, almost like you're telling a story. So that'll make you really on your feet when you're doing um you know podcasting and if you run into like a, a slow moment or a dead a dead moment then you can like switch over real quick and come up with a new topic so Absolutely. I think that'd be it's like too. improv as well it's like acting i feel like you have to be able to say yes and and keep things going and uh maintain the the atmosphere you know like you don't want dead air but you also don't want things to go stale and awkward i think right that's a huge one we have a new person in the chat. Austin Thomas says, oh, my God, I know her. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> That's the amazing so, DJ I mentioned earlier. <laughs> ooh. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we're going to move into uh, one of the last things we'll talk about, which is distribution. Kind of what everyone in the chat has been <laughs> wanting to talk about. So uh, we will we'll talk about it. Um, this kind of leads us into the sponsor of today's show, uh, for the audio listeners, those on the podcast, um, here is the sponsor for the audio platform and for the people watching on Twitch and on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, today's episode is sponsored by Audible. So here is a word from our sponsor real quick. We'll be right back. 
Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. Audible is an online audiobook and podcast service that allows users to purchase and stream audiobooks and other forms of spoken word content. And because you listen to my show, I'm going to give you a 30-day free trial to Audible. Just go to the link in the description below, www.audibletrial.com slash first. My resolution this year is to read more books. They make you smarter, but they can also bring you closer to the things you love, like Star Wars. Now, if you're like me and you try to get your hands on every single Star Wars book you can possibly find, then you probably have the same problem I do, shelf space. But it's not just about that. Audible is the leading creator and provider of premium audio storytelling enriching the lives of millions of listeners every day. Audible has everything you need. Audiobooks, Audible Originals, podcasts, and more. Thousands of titles. And you can listen anywhere, anytime, on your phone, on your computer, in your car, and they're always launching new content. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with the Audible Plus plan. But like I said, you can get 30 days for free with the link in the description below, www.audibletrial.com slash Han Talks First. It's time to start listening, my friends. Link below. Enjoy. Woo. I hate looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> I look it's back so and I'm like, there's how... some cheesy stuff in there. <laughs> it's funny how that never, like, how do you get used to hearing your own voice? <laughs> it's so tough when, like, I'm editing and you got to listen to yourself all the time. It's like, oh, I can't believe people actually listen to this. <laughs> No, but, but yes. actually you sound great. Like you have really come into your own style. And like, even like today when you did the intro, I was like, oh, he's taking notes. Like, no, oh, he's got like, <laughs> he's got like exactly, he knows exactly what he wants to say and um, the, the pacing of it and the timing and everything flows. Like what, what clicked for you there to like fall into that rhythm? Uh, well, it definitely depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the most part, it's because I started doing these live shows. Like I, I've only been doing live shows since November of last year. So I, I'm still relatively new, but uh, I remember my first stream. And for any of you listening or watching, if you remember that first stream, it was bad. It was real bad. It was me and my 480p webcam and no graphics. Uh, just had nothing prepared and for some reason that is my most watched live stream ever no idea how it happened <laughs> oh, no. there were 680 <laughs> people that watched that and that was my first their first impression of me of live streaming and um i've obviously gotten a little bit more comfortable but i think it was just like we talked about earlier that repetitive diff repetitive motion and getting into that habit and my my opening is pretty much always the same and my closing is always the same but i make it me because i have a little well you know a little catchphrase like at the end of every episode and things like that which makes it easier for me to kind of know where i'm going so i don't know it, it depends on the person i guess it, it, they're not always they're not always so smooth <laughs> you can ask <laughs> you can ask some people in the chat they know other times it's it's pretty bad but but hey like that's that's how you grow and i'm i'm a firm believer in just putting things out even if it's not perfect like you should never wait until it's perfect to just put something out there cuz that's then you'll never start you know what i mean and i, yeah. I worked for startup for some time and it, the startup life is very much like learn as you go just just put it out there as soon as possible and in the tech world engineers have have that same mentality as well like if you wait for it to be perfect you'll never put it out and you'll never ship so just ship it and then you know see what works see what didn't work and then make it better the next time it's kind of it's kind of how i did it yeah and um I forgot what I was going to say. Thank you, Audible, <laughs> for sponsoring the show. <laughs> um, Josh asked if I prefer live or pre-recorded. So uh, you might not think this is the answer I'm going to give, but pre-recorded. I actually prefer to take the time with my shows because if you, if you, for anyone who listens to the show, you'll you'll see the audio on my pre-recorded shows are way better than the ones on my live show because I have time to edit it. And I also have more time to script it 
and come up with a better story because unlike most podcasts, for the most part, it's just me, which can be really boring for some people. So when I come up with like everything I'm going to say, and a lot of my shows on the pre-recorded episodes, Josh, um, I put a lot of research into, such as like um, for books or like deep dives, like when I did the Dharma of Star Wars or the science of Star Wars, I put a lot of work into those. So I think that's why I prefer those better. But live is cool, too, because I get to actually talk with you guys, which I wish I could do more, honestly. But um, yeah, that's a Jesse, great do you think you'll have any pre-recorded shows? Yeah, I think so, especially when it comes to a podcast. Like if I want the audio to be really, really nice and clean and um, as you see already, people, I am very animated and I can get really loud and I'll get close to the mic and that maybe isn't great for someone who's driving a vehicle. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, for a podcast, I'll likely yeah edit and make sure that I'm not like scaring someone into their grandmother but um for live like i really want to continue to have like that upbeat energy and that fun i feel like it's contagious and i am a firm believer in being the energy you want to attract so that's something that i still want to have but yeah i i, I do see what you're saying like i appreciate the quality being there when it comes to an audio recording Something you said reminded me of something I forgot to mention with the audio. And like, if you were like, at some point, at some points of the show, you're like really soft spoken, but then at other points, you're like really loud. Well, the, to not annoy people, I hate when I'm listening to a podcast and it like blows my eardrum out of nowhere. What you can do is buy a compressor to put through, to plug in through your microphone and that'll even out your levels. I, do that on the pre-recorded ones because on the live ones, I don't have the computer capability. <laughs> My computer will blow up if I try to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it... another great option is getting a compression mic, which this one is a compressor mic. So it actually already yeah. does it. So that's something totally. that I mean that I looked into just because I know that <laughs> I don't have great <laughs> volume control. But I do love like the AC ASM. Right. Like, I love that shit, too. Um, I don't know if I'll actually embark on that journey. <laughs> no, know you know what? I, still there, but <laughs> I think you should. I think you should do it on this show. I've been wanting to do a episode that's completely ASMR, like Star Wars ASMR. And like, yeah. if you wanted to take an opportunity to like take a whole episode of Hon Talks first and discuss Star Wars and ASMR, you have my full permission to do so. I would love that. Yeah, I'll make sure to have my nails. <laughs> okay, you guys see what's happening on my screen right here? This yes. is what an is issue that? that we should talk about. And But before I get to it, I have to change my camera's battery. So, Yessie, can you take control for a minute here? Absolutely. I'm going to go over to the chat. Um, I see Josh asked what house I am in Harry Potter, which that is a great question because in my formative years i was a slytherin however i recently retook the pottermore test and it told me i was a gryffindor and i'm okay with it i mean i feel like gryffindor is a little overrated i'm not gonna lie like it's like okay everybody wants to be a gryffindor nobody wants to be a slytherin but at least i'm not a hufflepuff right that's all i have to say about that I'm going to slither in this podcast. Here we go. <laughs> that was perfect timing. <laughs> so this this whole show is probably questionable considering what I stated earlier, because I think this is more of a live stream than a podcast episode, because we're just kind of goofing around here. And um, <laughs> I'm a little lost. So. <laughs> um. Han has been trying to give you the show all day, Yessie. I know I'm it's the show trying. today. I love it. Um, I'm I'm so excited that I'm feeling at home, and I'm really grateful. I want to just like for a second express my gratitude to you, Han, just because you've helped me, you know, take on this new adventure, which seemed daunting when we first talked about it. Um, we kind of discussed how somebody can get into all of the tech stuff and the hardware and be like, forget it. Like, just forget it. It's too much. It's too hard. I can't do it. And you've made it so natural for me to just like 
take it away, Yessie. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, so thank you. I'm, I'm loving it. And I'm really excited to start curating my own content. I am too. Uh, I think um, I told you privately, I don't think I said it on the air, but I think whenever you start, <laughs> we never, whenever you start, you're going to kill it. Uh, I think you're going to get a lot of great community build here. And hopefully some people from here will check out your podcast in the future. Um, so let's talk about distri distribution. How the hell are you going to get people to listen to your stuff? So that's like probably the most important part. So I think before you even start, um uh recording i think way before that i think you should go ahead and create all all your social medias all your um accounts such as like if you're doing a patreon create a patreon you know of course get a brand ready and then create all this social media and then kind of state your uh, i guess what do they call it mission like an mo or mm -hmm. like um the goals for your your show or whatever and get everything ready and before you actually publish start recording a bunch of stuff. And then once you have like three things ready to go, then you can um, go ahead and make everything public and then start releasing stuff and kind of have like a backlog ready to go. But as far as like where, where you can distribute like podcasts, there's different hosts you can use. I use Anchor. So for the audio listeners, you just heard the Anchor um, sponsorship, which is on every single episode, almost every episode, but they're the best. Um, so Yessie, if you're going to do it, I highly recommend using anchor and this goes for anybody like you just heard in the sponsorship, you can start your, you don't have to pay anything to distribute your podcast. Anchor will do everything for you that now they don't ask for us, you to for them to sponsor your show in return. So I put the anchor sponsorship on each one of my shows because it's a way for me to earn money. but that's not a requirement if you're going to distribute with Anchor. So I know a lot of people think that. So that's not actually a requirement. But if you want to earn an income, that's a way to do it. But Anchor is the best. You can edit your audio on their website. You can upload on their website. You can also do video on their website. Not a lot of people use Anchor.fm to watch or listen. But Anchor puts it on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, or everywhere. Like... I think my podcast is distributed to almost like 50 different platforms that most of which I had no idea about. I saw one the other day. It was some podcast host in Puerto Rico and I'd never heard of it and everything was in uh, Spanish and it, it was just so cool to see, but Anchor does that and they're, they're just the best. They have like little tutorials you can watch and you can also bring in your own sponsors like my audible sponsor they they cooperate with each other as long as you're an affiliate and i don't know i started out the only reason i'm so hyped about anchor is because i used to use buzzsprout which a lot of people use buzzsprout makes you pay and they make you think that if you want to distribute a podcast you have to pay that's what most of these places want you to believe they want you to believe that you have to hire someone to do it for you. So that's what I thought. And I paid these people like 25 bucks a month to distribute my podcast. And I was losing hundreds of dollars because I went months using their platform. And then I found Anchor and I was like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I paying for this? So that's another th reason why I kind of wanted to do this show too, is because a lot of people think you have to pay for equipment, for you know editing software, for the streamer and the distributor but you don't so I, I recommend anchor anchor for the most one and uh well I, I lost my note section so if you have any questions yesi or something no yeah that's phenomenal i really appreciate that take because um i personally don't really like gatekeeping information and having it be accessible like on this live free streaming like it's it's so awesome to know like i had no idea that this was something that was literally at my fingertips right like i probably yeah. would have ended up paying <laughs> because i didn't know any better <laughs> and that's usually how they get you <laughs> yeah definitely and uh, i had to learn the hard way so how do you go about getting a sponsorship um okay so for my the audible sponsor for example um 
first of all, you have to have all the things we talked about. You have to have a regular schedule. You have to have a fan base. You have to have um, quality work and consistency. And, and that's how you that's how you can start applying to these places. When I applied to be an audible offici- um, officiate, officiate, is that it? Affiliate? Affiliate. Thank you. Officiate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, when I applied to them, it's it's as simple as applying for a job. You just you go to these companies' websites. They usually always have a section for endorsement or something like that, or a sponsorship program. I applied to Audible. Took a couple weeks. They looked at all my stuff. They thought it was valuable for them too. So they we decided to work together. And with every sponsor you get, regardless of who they are, you're gonna have to make up what to say about them. They won't give you things to say. You, you have to do that. And then they approve it, which is something I found very interesting because I could say whatever I want in a minute's time. And it's not what they, their PR has prepared. It's just, it's weird. But um, so they're very picky though, like with sponsors, like you have to have a certain amount of listeners. Some of them are generous, like audible. You know, they were like, yes, we'll work with you. But if I wanted to get... um bang energy drink for example i probably don't have the amount of followers they're looking for to be able to put a sponsor ad on my show but for me it's about things that i don't want to bring on a bang energy on my show because it has nothing to do with my topic right but audible you can get star wars books from that and it actually helps my listeners so i was like that's 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 for my show but anything else it's kind of hard to find that demographic because i don't want to put ads on a show if it's just gonna piss off my listeners oh absolutely i feel like that's an ethical thing and it's also a intelligent decision for marketing purposes like right it's just it's you have to be marketing savvy and you also need to be able to write copy for (laughs) an ad (laughs) so and i yeah, and I have a another example is I have a, a new sponsor coming up soon, which I haven't announced yet, but I I won't have an ad on my show. I'll just be it's hard to say without giving away. I'll be showing it on screen what it is, what that product is so that people can see it, but there won't be an actual ad for it. So that's another option too, which I think is way more beneficial for the listeners, you know. And no, it it's not Coke. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was Coke. Okay, everyone in the chat is talking about Harry Potter. <laughs> I know it's because you stepped. Yes, what out. have you done? You stepped out, and I <laughs> turned it into a Harry Potter podcast. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this was fun. Enjoy. Yes, he talks Harry Potter. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Josh says he was oh, a Slytherin back in the day and was also placed recently in Gryffindor Um, at the heart though. I'm a Ravenclaw. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Nobody likes Hufflepuff. I'm sorry. Like I feel like that entire house is just for people who don't even have the backbone. You know what I'm saying? Like my girlfriend is a Hufflepuff. (laughs) 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 She's so sweet. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it couldn't be me. <laughs> right. I well, mean... Josh, as we know your first topic for when you start, I think we do too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really could talk about Harry Potter all day. Um, I'm a huge fan of Harry Potter World in um, Orlando, Florida. That's where I grew up in Orlando. And I love it. I have one of the interactive wands that you get to like play oh, with those. in the park. And oh, it's just such a beautiful universe. Um, I do not stand JK Rowling, however, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> I know a lot of people who would agree with you. <laughs> such a shame. Um, so let's talk about the last bit here because you have a couple questions which kind of covers everything else we had to talk about. So, um, if you want to start with yeah, whichever um speaking of wanted. the chat, how do you moderate a chat? So, this is something that I struggled with before, but it depends on which platform you're using. If um So, for example, I'm running this through StreamYard, 
But if I want someone to moderate the chat or a company to moderate the chat, I have to go in individually on each place I stream and apply moderators. So I have moderators for YouTube and for Twitch. And you, it can either be like friends of yours that you add on settings. But for example, if I moderate someone on YouTube, that's only for YouTube. So that if like an asshole comes in or something, their comment can still get through on Twitch or something like that. It's kind of annoying, but you can get these companies like Stream Elements, for example, the option where you can go and tip for my show for people to tip on. They will put a moderator in the chat for you for because they have to moderate it anyway because of tipping. So if someone sends in a tip, it goes through them and I get a notification. So they're also considered a moderator as well. So it's really just about preference. I would start with friends though, which is what I did. Okay. Or loyal listeners. And then they're able to like put people in like timeout or like ban them from the channel if it's that bad, you know, things like that. Um yeah, I mean, in but, this day and age, I feel like trolling is so common and right. it can happen to even the smallest channel. I've seen it even with like it'll be just like one other person and they're just like going in on them. And yeah, um, in your experience, what's the best way to handle that when you're live? When you're live. Well, I guess it didn't happen once. Um, I won't share which experience because. That wouldn't be fair to my guest that was there, but um, there was this one time where it was um, it was pretty bad. But the usually the the messages were retracted by moderators, so I didn't have to worry about it. And then those people were like kicked out. Um, but you can also, I mean, you can also do it yourself. But it's really hard to like talk to the camera and then look at the live chat and then try to have a conversation with you and look at the camera. So. It's really just kind of, I guess, talking with your audience like here today, if I ask people, it's not a big enough stream to ask it, but like, hey, Josh or anybody, is there anyone in the chat giving you a hard time? And if there is, just easily boot them off. Or you can make someone a moderator right there and be like, hey, can you can you kick them out, please? So uh, my channel is not big enough, honestly, to give that much input because not a lot's happened with me with that. And as big as the chat gets is like when I have like a special episode, like uh, the Mandalorian finale or WandaVision finale, like big, big events like that. So otherwise, it's just everyone here is really great. You're all really great. Look at you. If you need a moderator, Han, I can help you. I do like five other channels. I will take you up on that because I trust you, Josh. Um, I will take you up on that. Um, keep a lookout for for an invitation from me very soon okay thank you so much for that recommendation i might also take you up on that josh because i feel at least for female gamers i feel it's very common to end up getting harassed or some i mean it's usually like it's not even the comments on the stream it'll be like other gamers that are right and you know, study science says that it's usually the guys who are really crap at the game that are the ones that are the meanest right. to female players. It's true. They did a study on it. Um, I can try to find the source here because this was something that I was really interested in. I read this article about how the players who end up harassing female players are usually not performing well, and they tend to be more submissive and um congratulatory to male players that are alpha and then the alpha players that oh. are really really good end up being more supportive and kind to the female players so it it totally has to do with some that makes sort sense of like yeah alpha beta mentality and harassing the female players because they're emasculated and they're not good yeah <laughs> wow that that would be yeah. Yeah. We we talked like off air <laughs> a couple of days ago and you have a lot of great insight with that i think you should do a whole topic on your podcast one day all about that about um just being a female in an industry not a specific one but just in general because you got so much like great stories to tell about that and like how you've handled it which i really love too but yeah i'm sure jo i recommend josh too he's uh like you said he does other channels i met him on another stream i think and then he came and started watching mine but uh he's He's good people. 
uh, I think you'll be good in good hands there. So thanks again, Josh. I appreciate it. I I hope I won't need it as much as I think I might, but especially with like GTA, for instance, even like I'm shocked by some of the programmed responses in the game that are extremely (laughs) misogynistic (laughs) to where I'm like, you nasty, you know, the whole time. But like, (laughs) I mean, it's just like, it's just so interesting how this kind of stuff is perpetuated within this like subculture and i love this space being opened up to more females like i recently started gaming i want women to feel comfortable and safe in this universe as well and i i love that you're giving you know the floor to more women in talking about star wars you know it's predominantly perceived to be a male fandom and that's not the case anymore i feel like so there's so many women who have a deep love for star wars and for all things nerdy and geeky and i think yeah once once women feel safe in these spaces that's when society has progressed you know yeah uh i i I agree with you people perceive it as a a male dominant thing and it is in the podcasting world which is why i want people like you on my show and to start a show and my girlfriend and i've been trying to convince her for the longest time to start a channel because she would be so funny and so beautiful i know you're watching so Aww. yeah i think you guys <laughs> yeah we need more women and if you guys haven't seen my most recent episode of the Han Talks first show i was joined by christina ariel if you are a star wars fan you know who that is she is the host of the official star wars show so go check that out that was last week this week it was a while ago go check it out anyway <laughs> um by the way before you get to the next question i just i did want to say a common question I get asked is how much money do I make doing the podcast, like doing YouTube and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you people. I don't make any money doing this. <laughs> this is all because I enjoy it. A lot of people are under the assumption that I make a lot of money doing this. Um, I don't know why. First of all, <laughs> YouTube has tons of parameters if you want to be considered an affiliate. And same well twitch does but not as much it's real easy to get monetized on twitch so yes i think you're in a good spot if you start there um but for something like youtube for example number one you have to have a thousand subscribers number two you have to have four thousand watch hours to be to put ads on your videos that's insane to give you an idea of where i am i only have about let's see 757 subscribers on youtube so that's how many I have. So I'm really close to that 1,000 subscriber mark to get monetized. But I'm sharing a lot of information with you guys. <laughs> I only have 637 public watch hours. I'm really far from getting monetized. So hopefully that clears the air. I don't make any money from this. And you have to reach those goals in 12 months, which means if you hit the 12 month, you got to restart. Wow. So it's really hard to get paid to do YouTube. I strictly do this because I really enjoy it. I really do. And but I wanted to bring this up because you're probably mainly going to do Twitch and Twitch is actually really easy to become affiliated with. And I think you could really soar at it. So here's for anyone out there who wants to see. I'll read it aloud for the audio listeners, too. But, you know, some of the parameters are you have to have streamed uh, for at least 30, 30 days for eight hours, which is very easy to achieve. You have to have unique days streamed uh, in the last 30 days, which is seven. And then an average viewer per stream is only three. And then you need 50 followers. That is so easily achievable for a platform like Twitch, especially if you're just going to be gaming and you don't have to do a scripted show that requires a lot of work all the time. I honestly could have reached th- that um, very easily if I hadn't had dedicated most of my time to YouTube, but I, I like YouTube more. Um, but I, I think, yes, yeah, so you could definitely, you know, hit that v- like in a couple months if you got started. I-, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like those goals are very attainable, but I think you should take it as a compliment. Like the fact that people perceive you to be somebody who is. Uh, making a living off of this just shows like at the quality the quality of the content that you're producing 
and you're almost there. I mean, we need to get more hours out of you, but <laughs> you're almost there with the subscribers. I just subscribed also. So <laughs> did you just, just subscribe? <laughs> I'm really, I know. Are you I'm kidding terrible. me? <laughs> I'm terrible. I follow you on everything else. I just, I'm not a YouTube person. Like, I don't ever do like the YouTube rabbit holes. Like, I'm more likely to go on Google and like read articles than I am to watch videos. But that's just me. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the time with Yessie today. She was not subscribed. So we're going to be leaving her. Goodbye. Anyway, back to the regular show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> damn i can't I believe you just subscribed to me i just i just i did at least i subscribed so now your numbers went up you <laughs> by one <laughs> anyway if you if you're watching this and you're not subscribed please subscribe it helps out so much like we just talked about also like the video please there has been well across platform about 25 people watched if you all liked on youtube that'd be 25 likes that's fantastic and it helps too helps out a lot so what other questions you got yes Okay, how do you add graphics and guests? Graphics. Well, I guess it depends on how tech savvy you are, which you said you're a seven. So um, I, I make all my own graphics or my girlfriend, Chris, does all like the art design for it and stuff like that too. But um, if you're going to do like, for example, if I ask people to subscribe and I put this little character up there, and for the audio listeners, it's just my little Han Talks first character with a subscribe button. So that is a, a PNG format, which is pretty much a transparent background. And you have to format it to the aspect ratio of whatever platform you're on. For, for example, this YouTube video is 16 by 9, which means this little guy I, I created here has to be the, the actual frame of the picture has to be this entire 16 by 9 frame so that's a that's a little confusing probably because i don't have a visual example but the same goes for like this little banner which i don't use anymore um but you just create a blank background image and you can also hire someone to do it for you but i do all of my own basically just stick with pngs even if you're doing a photo png is the way to go and then if you're using Streamyard, it's just a simple upload or if you're using OBS or something, they're called overlays or they're called different uh, scenes. And they usually have like an eyeball next to it and which shows that if it's being seen or not. And if you highlight the eyeball, then it shows the picture. And if you unhighlight it, it takes it away. Okay, so uh, it seems like StreamYard sense? is really straightforward when it comes to being able to showcase it. And then you can just create your own graphics like I would use like Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, st StreamYard is like the little kitty version, which makes it really easy. I love it. But you yeah, can, I noticed that I, you're also able to pull up comments on the screen. As yes, well, really cool. Yes, uh, for some reason you should uh, be able to see it. I don't know why. The subs can usually be gotten by appearing on other channels as a guest. Very good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So another reason why I grew my um, sub base is because of all the guests I've had. When I had you on my show that first time, my subs went up by like 10, 15 people, which doesn't sound like a lot. But for me, that was a big deal. For one show, one episode, that was a big deal. And then when I had Christina Ariel on, they went up another 15. And it's collaboration and i've been invited on several shows before i'm actually doing two other shows on sunday i won't announce it yet because i'm not 100 percent confident they're gonna follow through but i'll be on another show two other shows this week um but collaboration helps so much so like what we're doing you already i guarantee you already have at least three five people that are going to watch your first show whenever you do it mr anderson here mr rural farm boy Robin McFly. So it's like, it's easy press. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great point. That's actually how I grew my Instagram following initially. Um, I never, I mean, some people buy their followers. I never really did any of that. I just did it purely through like guerrilla marketing and just collabing with people and always shooting with new photographers and um, doing follow for follow and tag for tag and stuff like that. So that's a really great point. Yeah, and Josh asked, that reminds me of something he asked earlier, which was how do I market my podcast? Um, I just like that word of mouth collaboration. I have never paid for any piece of promotion and I never will because I think it's a scam. <laughs> I've worked in sales before. I know it's a scam and it, it, that's not what creates uh, brand loyalty. That's yeah. It'll bring in a couple people, but that's it's short term. You know, if you want long term, you got to make a connection with each fan, each person, each listener and you start small. So that's kind of how I like to do it. One thing I do is I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos and I will purposefully look for other independent podcasters like myself. And I would just go and I will watch a random video of theirs and comment and be like, this is amazing. Love it. I'm also an independent artist. If you go check out my stuff too, that'd be great. I'd love to know your thoughts. And I've, it's another reason why I grew my podcast so much too. Not the YouTube, but um, that's another trick as well. But yeah, I don't pay for anything. Please don't. I do did it. have a question about copyright. So that's something you do have to pay for. Like, let's say if I wanted to play like a song as like my intro, it would have to be something that I've copyrighted. Or if I want to use somebody else's song, I would have to purchase the rights, right? Um. Yes and no. If I um, if you uh, if you used um, "Love Is a Battlefield," for example, I don't know if you use that as your intro. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's the first thing that came to my head. <laughs> if you use "Love Is a Battlefield" as your intro, I can't even say it. Probably, um, you could put that on your podcast on Apple, on Spotify, and you wouldn't have to worry about a copyright. But if you put it on YouTube or Twitch, you would. So it depends on where you're putting it. I don't understand the full rules of why you can put it on Spotify, but a part of it has to do with this doctrine of law called fair use. And if when you're a podcaster, you're essentially a commentator. And when you commentate things like pop culture or music movies or um, like trailer reactions, for example, you're allowed to use footage, music, sound effects that are copyrighted because you're reacting to it and it's considered fair use. So it's kind of a loophole, but places like YouTube, you know, they, they license other people's stuff on it. So you have to have permission or purchase it or things like that. But so it's kind of depends on just where you put it, but I am going to go ahead and offer you. I would gladly help you write a uh, an intro or outro music. I've done seven other podcasts, like writing music for their intros and outros. So if you're down, you can always hit me up too. Absolutely. That would be so fun. I haven't even gotten that far to think about what I would want my theme song or whatever to be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, my, my question Love was primary. A battle <laughs> okay, you're fired. Just kidding. I take it back. <laughs> no, the reason I asked was because, oh, wow. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Is that comment was made. It really is a battlefield, huh? <laughs> um, the reason I asked was because of um, Austin wanting to DJ. Um, yeah. And I think with DJs, they actually have more leeway because they're mixing the song in. And typically they do purchase those songs in order to use them in a mix. So I don't think that copyright is an issue so much for DJing, right? No, because there's there's no law for remixes. So like I could easily resell, I don't know, Rain On Me by Lady Gaga <laughs> and speed it up half time. I could put it on YouTube and not have an issue. That's actually, I would listen to that. Like a chipmunk version or just like. <laughs> Both. I don't know. 
I don't remember the words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I think it's I'd rather be wet, but I no. I'd rather be dry, I, but at least I'm alive. That's what it is. Oh, it's it's so cheesy when you think about it. I know. It sounds like she's saying I'd rather be drunk, which yeah, obviously. Right. <laughs> But that's not what she's saying. Josh just said he gave you a follow on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. And uh, best chipmunk voice ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have any other uh, questions or is that about it? Um, how do you upload your stream to other platforms? Ooh. Um, so it's actually really important. One thing you have to consider when you're doing streaming is your upstream and your megabits per second. Uh, every time before I do a stream, I do a speed test and it's as simple as going to Google, typing in speed test and you'll come up with this and you just click run speed test. And then it'll tell you your download speed and your upload speed and download speed doesn't matter. Well, it matters, but not for streaming. Your upload speed matters. Usually you'll get around like, 40,000. And then what you'll do is it's kind of hard to explain. Whatever your upload stream is, you divide that in half. If it was 40,000, for example, you would take 20,000 of that and put that into your upstream like key number. And that's the rate at which you would upload to the internet. That way it's not taking all of it, but it'll help um, with your latency and other things like that. That I might have to like walk you through but that's really only if you use OBS or Streamlabs or other downloaded software. But StreamYard, you don't have to worry about it. And if you use StreamYard, for example, you can individually go in and connect your YouTube, your Facebook, your Twitch, similar to how if you're connecting your Facebook to your Instagram account, it's just like that. And you could do that with all of your all of the softwares too. Are you able to do that as well on StreamYard? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, StreamYard, not just Streamlabs, right? Right, yeah. I do it all on here. Oh, cool. Okay, perfect. You lost me there, but we can't, we made it back. It was all the numbers. Yeah, I know. The first time I heard it, honestly, I was so confused, and I didn't get it. And I, mean, <laughs> I probably still don't understand it fully as much as I'm supposed to, but it's like that little stuff that like... You don't think about, but it makes such a big difference because if you put in the wrong upstream number, you could be seeing like right now we're talking to the audience, but we are on about a fraction of a delay. But if I put in the wrong upstream number, it could be a 10 second delay. And then it happened to me one time. I said goodbye to everybody and I clicked end the stream and it cut me off 15 no. seconds early. So no one actually heard me say goodbye. <laughs> just look at like my stream just cut off. So it's like weird things like that that shouldn't matter. But you ever like watch the news and you're like, why can't they get the mics to fucking sync up so they can like hear each other on time? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what this is. I mean, that's like every Zoom meeting I've been in like <laughs> all year. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. Oh, what? Boy. Followed you um, on Instagram? I just finally said, oh, you just got an Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were being pulling a yesy and being like, <laughs> oh, I'll wait for like three months and then I'll follow you. He just searches you every time. That's actually really <laughs> nice. That was nice. Thank you, Josh. I will follow you back most definitely. So do There's you use an extension to schedule future streams? Like I saw for today's stream, for instance, it already said like, oh, so this is scheduled for today. Oh, so that's that's interesting too. So you I did that on StreamYard, but you can also do it on OBS too. I'm only bringing up those two examples because I think those are the two you should shoot for cuz the other ones are I don't think worth your time. They're not worth my time. But you can set it up on StreamYard and schedule it and put a thumbnail. But if you want people to actually see it, you have to go back to YouTube or you have to go back to Twitch. 
no matter what, and you have to update all the info. For example, with this stream, uh, I can't see. Let me pull up the the YouTube real quick. So if you guys look in like the description or yes, if you look in the description, it'll mm -hmm. say um, it'll have like a little a paragraph and it says here's some other videos to check out. Here's a tip link and it has hashtags in it as well. And then it has like your Instagram and my podcast link. So you have to do that on the YouTube channel and separately you have to do it on Facebook and on Twitch, you can't connect those together, which is the worst part, because if you don't fill in like if you don't if I don't give this video a playlist, less people will see it. If I don't give it hashtags, less people will see it. If I don't um, put uh, the date it's being recorded, less people will see it. So it's like all these little things that you have to do that you can't just do on one platform, which kind of sucks. But um, that's something that like I can walk you through as well because I know it's kind of hard to visualize it when I'm just talking no, about something you've probably I, never seen. I totally seen. get you. Like it's good to know that like filling in the description and linking all these things are something that you have to do individually. And I'm looking right. through here. There is a typo, so I will clarify for my for my Instagram. It's Yessy. That's Y E S S Y S E T S S A I L. Yessy set sale. Wait, what did for I put? Yessy set sales. <laughs> 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 I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Right it's now. Okay. But I did notice that. So I did want for all the listeners to have the correct handle. <laughs> yes, he said sale. Yeah, with two S's. Sets sale. Oh yeah. Awesome. Perfect. I think that's all my questions have been answered, which again, thank you so much for doing this with me. I feel like this idea has been a long time in the making and I'm so glad that it's something that your, your viewers can find valuable and that you find valuable for yourself as well. Cause I know a lot of people have been asking you too. So I'm so glad we did this. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I'm probably not going to upload this full thing to the podcast because it's a little long. Um, but for anyone who has watched it on the YouTube, thanks for watching so long. Um, this is kind of an offbeat video for what we normally do here. Um, but we're trying new things out and hopefully you guys got some value from it. And we'll be back on Monday with the regular Han Talks First show. And we got some great topics coming up then, which you want to join us for. And of course, we just did earlier today our Falcon and Winter Soldier after show, which you can go watch now. This was, are you watching this show? Yes. Sir? Um, I've seen the first two episodes, so I'm not caught up. Oh my God. Okay. So. I've been kind of like um, just like normal about the whole thing until this episode. And it like it made it my favorite TV show of of the Marvel stuff so far. So it gets way better. It, it's really good. And yeah, I can't wait for next week's either. Um, and of course, we'll have Yessie back too if she wants to come back, you know. Yeah, totally. Thank you. And I'll, I'll probably um, catch up on it soon. Um, it's, it's the same, it, it was the same with WandaVision where the first two episodes were kind of slow and then it just like hits you and it picks up from there. So I'll definitely have to give it a chance and finish it up. Yeah. Well, if you ever, <laughs> if you ever are watching a show in real time, like Marvel or Star Wars, and you want to do the after shows with me or Chris, you let me know. And we'll make that happen too. Um, but I think that's it for today, guys. If you were watching live, thank you so much. If you're watching or listening on the podcast, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, it was something we've been talking about for a couple of days and hopefully it brought you some value. And if you guys are starting your channels or your YouTubes, let us know so we can watch it as well, watch you grow in real time, and then we can collaborate in the future as well. And uh, look out for Yessie's thing coming up. Please go vote on her, on her poll. Um, again, that link is in the comment section and you can go help her decide what she's going to do. And um, let us know when you'll like to see her come back as well. Um, you got any projects coming up you want to talk about? No, I just really want to curate this this channel and get my content planned out. And yeah, get get ready for the burn this year. I think that's where my head's at right now. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Well, like every week, um, we have our little outro saying, but I'm going to actually let our guests do it this time. So, Yessie, will you take us out?
I would be honored. And now, somehow, some way, somewhere, this week, may the force be with you. So who talks first? You talk first. I talk first.